And where have you been lately, Mr. Wood? Well, the last two weeks I've been on holiday, but... Have you? So you've not been able to get out much and do a great deal? No. OK. Right, let's go from Highgate Station and take you from there, please, to Blomfontein Road, please. <clears throat> the examiners aren't there to catch you out. They're not there to make life difficult for you. They are there to establish that you have learnt the knowledge, that you've actually been out on the road, that you've seen the places, that you know the names of the roads, you know precisely the location of the various places along the route. And they're there to encourage you to learn more. I'm just screening too much. No, I've done. I can't place the general spot. All right. Now let's go from the Sainsbury wing of the National Gallery and take me from there, please, to the High Veld. The Sainsbury's wing of the National Gallery is uh, Trafalgar Square, the Coxburg, uh, East, East Pell Mill. To the High Veld. The High Veld. I'm not sure we've seen a huge amount of encouragement. It may not have come across as encouragement, but the purpose of the way they ask the questions is in fact to put thoughts into your mind. So although it may come across as you being asked a very difficult question and you haven't got a clue where the particular location is, the idea is to encourage you to go and find out. It begins with an A. Um, it goes forward into the mill bank. Go on, then. Comply with uh, Lambeth Circus. A horse ferry circus, forward mill bank, set down on the right. Where did you go on holiday, Mr. Wood? Uh, Spain. Did you? It shows. Here you go. Leave door open, please, when you go out. Bye bye. bye. Do you think knowledge boys feel encouraged when they're in this building? Uh, I suspect they may not. Are they frightened of me? No, I don't think so. They can't anticipate what I ask, which is, which is what they try and do. And I try and make it as realistic as possible by just going from one place to another. Uh, I've never bitten anyone yet. I've never thumped them. I've never sworn at anyone. And I'm always polite, I think and pleasant to them. If they're frightened, then it's their own myth and mystery that they build up, and it's nothing to do with me. That's their, that's their imagination and their mind. This way of doing things, if you're not a person of strong mind, it will frustrate you, you know? What do you mean? Well, the way he moves, you know, he moves so slow, you know. Come with me, this way, please. You know, oh, never mind, you know. And you say, oh, why is this man be? But that's the way he is, you know? That is the way he is. You know, he's one away. It's <laughs> not that I like him. <laughs> Someone in the flats across the road here had a toucan. And I used to gaze at that during the summer days and think, why isn't the toucan flying away? And I suddenly realised that it was just a, a, a Guinness toucan. So I decided I'd get a parrot to look on the window to look at the toucan. If the parrot's facing out of the window, I've had a good day, and if the parrot's facing inwards, then I've had a bad day. Or and I'm sure they can tell you all different explanations as to what way he's facing and what mood I'm supposed to be in and what questions I'm supposed to be asking. And I'd change him occasionally just to give him something to talk about or think about. That's the parrot. <laughs> Next. <laughs> People have been making appearances for some time. In 1851, visitors to the Great Exhibition in Hyde Park were furious London's cabbies couldn't find their way around the capital. The knowledge was born. And every generation since, knowledge boys have been roaming London, aware they have to prove their competence to the Metropolitan Police.
With the verbal test came regulations and stipulations aplenty. Not just about competence, but about character. Every cabbie's badge comes on a short leash attached to a buff manila file. Personal details are logged. Any complaints or misdemeanors recorded. A knowledge boy may finally make the leap from two wheels to four, but the carriage office never quite loses its grip on the man or his vehicle. A long time ago, an American man came to this, this particular building to, to see the knowledge, uh, how it operated, and he went away having described it as the last outpost of the British Empire, where we still wear shirts and collars and ties and shoes and things. Well, like the handbrake, please. Operate, please. Rear fog light. We try to maintain the standards which we think that members of the public require. If people are happy being driven around by people with um, designer string vests over beer guts, well then so be it. But we at least here try to maintain a standard that will meet the, the highest levels throughout the world. I think what they don't realise up there is um, they've all come out from being ex-policemen on a pension and there's people like us who are on schemes or, or, or on the dole that have got no money and they don't realise that we're out every day in the rain, in the cold and like that's, we just want to hurry up and get it done so we can earn a living, it's just a proper living. I don't think they realise that up there. So, is there a pot of gold at the end of the knowledge? Ask the London Taxi Driver Association what cabbies earn, and they suggest contacting Taxi Newspaper. And they recommend calling the Fellowship of Hackney Carriage Officers, who aren't able to comment. The Inn and Revenue are under the impression the average cabbie earns about £10,000 a year, after tax and expenses. Seems a rather small reward for at least two years' unpaid labour on the knowledge. In fact, a figure three times that might be nearer the mark. Gooseberry Manabout lead by East Stage Road, right Peckham Road, West Side, Fourth Forest Hill Road. The penury of the apprenticeship could explain why at least 60% of people who start the knowledge never finish. But if you do stick with it, there is the occasional breakthrough. Like that moment when the jumble of maps and streets all falls into place. Fourth Camwell Road, left by a place called New Church Road. Right Southampton Way, left Commercial Way, right Peckham Road, left Peckham High Street, right Swain Road, right Consort Road, right Manhead Lane. It's not unlike the first time you could do your seven times table. In knowledge boy jargon, seeing it. No two ways about it. The guy's knowledge is incredible, absolutely. His knowledge of points is phenomenal. He's like uh, Kemp's directory. He really is. If we are judging the knowledge on people's knowledge, then Jim should have been out a long time ago. Live on the left Park Street, right Sunday Street, right Southwark Street. Leave on the left Lancaster Street, left Lancaster Terrace, right Westbourne Street, Ford Lancaster Leave on the left, Ford Lancaster Ford Lancaster Street, Ford Lancaster Ford Lancaster left Stanhope Gardens, Ford Harrington Road, leave by Shepherd's Bush Green, Ford into Goldhawk Road, right Chiswick High Road, down the right, right Southampton Street, right Maiden Lane, set down and into the Office Circus, Office Street, set down and left, set down and left. Yeah, OK then, Mr. Uh, Mr. Nolan. Right into Elliston Place, left into uh, Markham Street, right into King's Road, uh, left into Lotts Road, forward into Chelsea Arbour Drive, and it's facing south. Okay, Mr. Marshall, I'll give you your A's today. When you come back next time, I'll bring with you £27.50, okay? Thank you so much, sir. There we go. Leave the door open as you go out, please. Thank you. The joy of seeing it is matched only by the pleasure of the drop. That sudden and unforeseen day when, for reasons best known to himself, 
an examiner moves the knowledge boy on from one grade to the next. In Glenn Marshall's case, the drop is to his 14s, the last hurdle before his bag. Right, let's go. Get out! Six months on, it's no such luck for Jim. He may yeah, think he's room. seen it. The carriage office has other ideas. Okay. Leave the door open. He's been stuck on 28s for a while now. I've got another 28 days uh, now for Mr. Howes, Mr. Orwell, Mr. Price. A little disappointed? Uh, no. No. You lie. <laughs> 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 it's all psychology, man. They work it, so you got to work it. You know, you do it in a diplomatic way, yeah? It's a wind-up, I feel. It's a game. It's all a game to test your character. And if you've got any sense at all, you don't buy it. You just... You go with the flow. Is that exactly the word? And, uh, hopefully... You get it right eventually. You don't bite. You don't flare up. You do internally. But hopefully it doesn't show on your face. And then they think, well, you know, look, he's, he's not going to start going silly when he's a cabbie. And once you've got a knowledge of this, and they know that your character's right, then they'll pass you forward. I, I think that's how it works. I think that's how the system works. When I was younger, I was a naughty boy, yeah. Like, people do change, you know? People grow up, they have children, they have responsibilities. I would say that if they got to do a character test on me, et cetera, et cetera, then I'd agree with that. I mean, I've got no qualms about that, because I've got nothing to hide, so anyone can do any test they like on me, I don't mind. You know, some people might take exception to it, but I don't. I do feel that, yes, I do have to prove myself, and I agree with them totally when the policeman got shot in Clapham. And I had an appearance the day after, and Mr Lippitt, he said to me, nasty business, that copper being shot in Clapham, wasn't it? Now he's looking for my reaction now. So I said, yes, sir. A very bad business, sir, and it's cast a black shadow over us all, sir. He said, oh, well, that's the way of the world. And I didn't say another word. When I went for the salt on the knowledge of land, Mr. Ong took the salt. And like, it's like three and a half years ago, and I remember like last night, one of his things he said is, if you've got hair, I want it cut, and if you ain't, I want it polished. And I'm lucky that Pat cuts me hair every time I have an appearance. Yeah, it's just... And it's all, it's just the religion with me. I do the old-fashioned style. That's it, but it suits me. <laughs> yeah. I do everything the same me. every time I go. You don't laugh. Set routine. A set routine. A set routine. And pray that I get it right. Pat, what's it like being married to a man on the lodge? Hard. <laughs> Very no. lonely, I must be honest with you. I mean, he's out on the bike and I have to do my own shopping, which I don't drive. And I have to carry such a lot. And where he used to take me. You know, and he's out so long, Sundays as well. You get very, very self-centred. But, as I said, you know, got I want to do worth it. it. Yeah. And he has worked hard, so yeah. I can't... Yeah. I do moan, I do moan. Everybody's wife it's must Because moan. I'm on my own. It does something to me and I just don't like it, do I, Lou? No. I go, no. oh, horrible. And we do end up shouting, because he don't. keeps on and on. We're a pair of shouts. Yeah. You know, when he goes to school, you don't always come home happy, do you? No. So, if I've got the arm and we have had a proper round, then I'll just go out at six o'clock, and, and I'll yeah. just go out. We've had more rares over the knowledge, knowledge than we've had anything. anything. I must be, and that is the truth. In all our marriages, that is yeah. the gospel. That is the truth. I leave home at about five o'clock in the morning. And I will do uh, 